Hello, everybody. My name is John Jennings. I'm a registered nurse and a public health nurse. And I work for the Department of Veterans Affairs in San Francisco, California at their medical center. I've been there for 22 years. This is an in-service for my colleagues in the telephone advice section of the medical center. Um, we cover a vast area, Nevada, Northern California, Hawaii, Guam, and occasionally American Samoa. And it's in response to a journal, a journal article that I presented for our journal club, which dealt with stress found in telephone advice nurses. Um, and this is, this is a response to that. It's one way to reduce stress. It's the one way that I have found to reduce stress and that I use consistently. Uh, it, it, that is meditation. Um, just to start out, there's a very famous Dr. John Kabat-Zinn who works at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. And he has for 40 years uh, taught meditation to uh, doctors and nurses and healthcare workers um, at Mass General and also to, he expanded it to patients and terminally ill patients, John Kabat-Zinn, he's a rather famous fellow. So he believes deeply in meditation for healthcare workers. Uh, now, where do I get the authority to say anything about meditation? Um, I have been meditating since 1966, so that's 45 years. Um, I started out in the Roman Catholic Jesuit uh, tradition of meditation and um, did that for two years and then found um, Buddhism and Buddhist meditation and have continued with Buddhist meditation up until now. Very recently, um, a year ago, I entered into an intense um, meditation study um, with my teacher, um, whose name is Heja Sunim. He um, he is um, a, um, a teacher in the Korean Buddhist um, tradition, um, and he lives in the Midwest, and we communicate by Skype. Um, and now getting back to the point, so what gives me the authority? Well, 45 years, and now this past year in very intensive uh, study of Buddhist documents uh, relating to meditation and uh, retreats and uh, so I've really ramped up my practice um, this my plan is um, this is in preparation for retirement and things that will happen during retirement um, I also, um, in my meditation uh, study this year, have um, become a member of the Five Mountains and Order, which is a um, an international order of uh, of Zen clergymen, Buddhist clergymen, and uh, we are all we are mostly in this country, we're, but we are also all over the world and. Uh, we also keep in touch uh, via um, Skype, and uh, we recently met about two months ago uh, for a retreat and to get to uh, see each other again and chat. And, uh, and this here is uh, my monkey suit. <laughs> um, I am what is known as an Anagarika or a Hejanim which is a, a level of um, monastic training. It's just a title. Now, 
people will say to you, to me, my sister will say to me, well, it didn't do you much good. Well, uh, my response to her is, uh, you, sh you know, you knew me before, um, and uh, hopefully it's done me some good. I know that it does help me uh, through the day. It... Um, so let me move on. This is uh, this is all just props, you know. This back here, this symbolizes this back here symbolizes my vows uh, that I've taken. Uh, this over here symbolizes uh, love and patience. And behind me is on the floor uh, is a mat where I meditate. Uh, but this is all just props. This is um, meditation is not about holiness and um, walking around with a smile and pretending to be nice it's it's about uh, it, it's about a stress reduction and um, so what are we doing in meditation uh, there are various levels it, as you get deeper and deeper into it there are other aspects to it but um, basically, meditation addresses your response to the world. Um, very, very um, scientifically, uh, there is a space between stimulus and response. Now, what meditation does on a very basic level, is to lengthen that time before you respond. So it gives you time to think. So that, that's on a very, very basic level. Meditation give, gives, you, gives you the time to think a little bit. So basically, what it is is mind training. It's just like, it's just like exercise. Um, it's an exercise for your brain, for your mind. Um, excuse me while I look up my notes. Um, it is just like exercise. You have in order for it to work you have to be consistent. Now this doesn't mean that you have to you know sit for on your mat and meditate for an hour doesn't even mean that you have to sit on a mat you can sit on a chair and there are I will, I'll discuss a little later types of meditation doesn't even mean that you have to sit on a chair but it, it basically is an exercise for your brain. Uh, we have all of these thoughts that go through our mind every day. There are two types of thought. Uh, there is natural thought and there is deliberate thought. Now natural thought is um, the thought that pops into your mind. Um, my husband was so funny this morning. Um, my wife looks so nice going to work this morning. Boom. That's a thought that pops into your mind. Now, deliberate thought is, um, you know, my my husband was so funny this morning. You know, he really is funny. Uh, that comes from his mother. And actually, his sister is kind of funny, too. You get into conversation with your original thought, your natural thought that pops up. My husband is funny. Then you start this this dialogue with yourself. So your your mind is constantly going. What we're trying to do in meditation is to slow down that deliberate thought. So a mind, a, a, a thought pops into your mind in meditation and you let it go. No conversation. A thought pops into your mind and you let it go. So you're sitting there quietly, relaxed. A thought pops into your mind. 
and you let it go. Now, to be more specific, there are two, there are two aspects to meditation. There's shamatha and vipassana. Now, shamatha is when you fancy, these are Sanskrit words, a uh, language that doesn't exist anymore. Um, these are, um, sh shamatha is just sitting down in a quiet room and relaxing. Just, just relax. You know, a few days ago, even though I've been meditating for 45 years, you know, you still have to remind yourself, just like if you're a runner, you have to remind yourself of stretching and, you know, putting on the right clothes that gives you movement. And so with meditation, you, you, there's certain aspects that you always have to do. You sit down and you just relax. Now, to get back to, um, I'm getting away from my thought, but um, the other day I sat down on my mat, and um, after about five minutes, I thought, what is going on here? Just relax, 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 relax. So that's one part of it. You know, we never, you know, we pop into bed, pull up the covers, no, 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 no. We never really relax, and we never really relax our mind either. So uh, shamatha is the first step, and then vipassana. Vipassana is observing the, the, the natural thoughts that come up. Don't start discussing them. Thought comes up. It can be any thought. It can be a sexual thought. My teacher tells a story of a guy um, in a Zen center years ago who was who was movie star good looking, and everybody in the temple just adored this person because of how good looking he was. Also, he seemed to be a deep, deep meditator. He would go into the um, the meditation hall and uh, before anybody was there and he'd be in deep meditation before anybody got in for the morning meditation and uh, my teacher finally said to him you know you must be meditating for years you seem to be so deep in meditation and the guy said no 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 all I ever think about is sex when I'm sitting and trying to meditate sex 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 so you know they, they, all sorts of thoughts will come into your mind the thought comes into your mind, vipassana, you observe it, oh, I'm thinking about sex. Let it go, no conversation. The next thought comes into your mind. That soup this afternoon was delicious. No conversation. Another thought comes in. The car needs cleaning. No conversation. You could go, the car needs cleaning. I got to go to work. When am I going to do it? Maybe I'll take it down to Valencia Street and have it done. I don't feel like doing it myself, breaking my back. Blah, 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 blah. No. The car needs cleaning. The thought is gone. Now, one of the, one of the biggest mistakes in, in meditation is that people go, Oh, damn, you know, I'm planning on cleaning the car instead of relaxing here. Don't do that. It's just, it's mind training, and that's on a very basic level, that's what it is. And just like in running, you can make mistakes, you could, or you can not be quite into it. You may you could have slogging along at Golden Gate Park instead of putting effort into it. Then you, there's no guilt there. You pick yourself up and you start going. It's just in meditation, the same thing. If you suddenly catch yourself in a conversation, there's no guilt involved. It, that's where you are, and you bring yourself back to the quiet mind. And then you bring yourself back to the quiet mind. 
And believe me, meditators like myself, 45 years, I can spend the entire meditation period um, just in all sorts of conversation and realizing two or three times, only two or three times in 25 minutes or more, that I'm not meditating, I'm chatting. But there's, there's no guilt here. It's, it's mind training, and you just bring yourself back. Bring yourself back. Bring yourself back. Eventually, you'll be very surprised. One day you'll sit down to meditate, and my goodness, your mind is so quiet, and you're so relaxed. It's really a wonderful feeling. So this is all very simple. Um, the Japanese call it just sitting. That's it. Just sitting. You're in a room. You're sitting in the room. You're looking around. This is, this is where I meditate. I sit here. This is, this is it. Basically, I have a line that uh, I like a lot, that I'm a world observer with no comment. So you can look around, you can see what thoughts go through your mind, but you just don't comment. And that's all it is. People think it's this magical kind of thing. Um, there are aspects to it that are quite remarkable when you've been meditating for many years. Um, even when you're meditating for just a, f a short time, you can find... You can find that, um, gee, I am so calm today. Nothing is getting me bent out of shape. That call comes in. It's some very complicated or, re or ridiculous situation that you just want to go, oh, God. And yet you find you're not doing that. You're just taking things. And what happens, too, is that um, eventually uh, you'll get that call and you look at it and you're calm and you go to do your assessment in the chart and you call the patient and you're there for the patient nothing is distracting you you're not saying oh this is a guy from Clear Lake and oh my god you know Clear Lake and blah 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 no you find that that conversation is not happening. Um, what is happening is you're listening. And even when you were in the chart, you were listening to the chart. Um, you're right there on point. Interesting. You may only find in the beginning that it only happens, uh, you know, maybe for a half hour, an hour later, and then you're right back to your old self. Well, so what? You're in training. Um, you're not going to run, um, you know, the San Francisco Marathon two days after you started walking to try to start running. It's the same thing. It's mind training. Stimulus. Response. A little bit later. Not the immediate. Oh, damn, it's clear like. No. Okay, I have a call from Clear Lake. You know, so that's in a way. Um, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to um, apply meditation to our practice of nursing as TANS. So you're slowing down that response time. You get the stimulus, which is the call, but you've been meditating, so you're rather calm and you get into your practice. You're not distracted by these other thoughts. Um, so, um, there, are, there are several ways of, um, of meditating. There's, there are many ways of meditating. So you have to find one that works for you. Um, there's pure meditation. Pure meditation is difficult until you have meditated for a while with another, excuse me, with another um, um, way of meditating. Pure meditation is just just sitting there 
and observing. That can be rather difficult because your mind, uh, suddenly your mind is wandering. Um, and it, it's, um, unless you have a great deal of concentration, it's difficult, but it's nice to try just sitting there, relaxing, and watching your mind. Now, if your mind's too busy, there are other ways. Um, one of one of my favorites, and it's it's a uh, it's widely used in Buddhism, is um, the uh, pointed meditation, which means you take an object and you sit it in front of you, and you just look at the object, no comment, just looking at the object. Um, Buddhist or Zen um, practitioners use this when they when they practice art, um, looking at something, no comment, just looking at it, looking at it, seeing it for what it is. The only thing you're responding to is what's going into your eyes. No thoughts about it. N not that, oh, this you know this piece of wood is brown and it's got it's got lines and it's you know, da, 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 no, just looking. And it helps you to concentrate and stay away from those roaming thoughts. Um, there's also an, one of my favorites is the blue light at the center of your heart. Um, blue, uh, lapis, the, the stone lapis lazuli is blue with gl gold flecks in it, and it's uh, meant for... It, it supposedly has healing powers. Um, the blue light at the center of your heart is to visualize a blue light at the center of your heart, a healing blue light at the center of your heart, and just concentrating on the blue this, and, the, and the radiance that's coming from your heart, this blue light at the center of your heart, blue light at the center of your heart. Um, there are other ways. Um, Buddhist practice walking meditation. You concentrate. You're just walking. You know, if you're going out for a walk, you concentrate on your feet walking on the ground and things around you, but no deliberate thought, no curse of thought. So concentrating, just like concentrating on the blue light, concentrating on the, the object, concentrating on your feet walking, um, keeps that conversation in your mind down, what you're trying to do, response time. Um, there's also uh, chanting. Um, in my tradition, the Five Mountain tradition, we chant. <coughs> we chant things. We chant in Sino-Korean, which is is really not a language, and it means nothing. It's just sounds. Interesting. <coughs> um, and bowing. Um, we practice bowing, so it's all in getting down on the floor, bowing getting up, getting down on the floor, bowing, getting up. So, like the Buddha said, it's all about mind. You know, you can have this wild, crazy mind that goes here and there and everywhere, or you can step back a little, and you might be a lot happier if you're a little bit calmer. And so, let me just check my notes to make sure I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. I have a quote here from Leonard Cohen, the great poet. Um, he says, uh, he was a Buddhist, and um, he says, so many thoughts, so many thoughts. So that just gives you a little, and he was a meditator his entire life and a great poet, but um, it, it just gives you the idea of, you know, even he um, just had this, you know, movie reel of thoughts going by 
and you just have to once again the more you bring yourself back to natural thought um, the one the thought that pops into your mind and don't give it conversation uh, the calmer you will be the calmer you will be um, and this this all brings me back to a quote by um, Siddhartha Gautama the Buddha <coughs> where he says thus shall you think of all this world a uh, bubble in a stream a flash of lightning and a summer cloud life is very short so make the best of it don't be in a tangle relax and <coughs> I think it's uh, with this cough, it's time for me to shut up. And hopefully, this will help you to um, to handle the stress of telephone care. Remember, consistency, just like in uh, running or any other exercise, consistency really is the key. You don't have to sit for you know, an hour every day or two hours every day, even if you just sit down for five minutes, even at the desk at work. If the phone isn't ringing, take a deep breath and calm that mind down. Calm it down. So I hope this helps. This is my in-service for 2012. Uh, thank you for listening. I've gone a little bit long, 27 minutes. Um, I just hope this helps.